पेज नंबर थर्टी टू लेसन नंबर थ्री हियर आर टू स्टोरीज अबाउट फ्लाइंग द फर्स्ट स्टोरी इज टाइटल्ड हिज फर्स्ट फ्लाइट द राइटर इज लियम ओ फ्लैटी द सेकेंड स्टोरी टाइटल्ड ब्लैक एरोप्लेन इज बाय फ्रेडरिक फॉर्सिथ Before you read since the earliest times humans have dreamt of conquering the skies here are two stories about flying number 1 a young seagull is afraid to fly how does he conquer his fear number 2 a pilot is lost in storm clouds does he arrive safe who helps him Now the first story title His first flight The young seagull was alone on his ledge His two brothers and his sister had already flown away the day before He had been afraid to fly with them Somehow when he had taken a little run toward the brink of the ledge and attempted to flap his wings he became afraid the great expanse of sea stretched down beneath and it was such a long way down miles down he felt certain that his wings would never support him so he bent his head and ran away back to the little hole under the ledge where he slept at night even when each of his brothers and his little sister whose wings were far shorter than his own ran to the brink flapped their wings and flew away he failed to muster up courage to take that plunge which appeared to him so desperate page 33 his father and mother had come around calling to him shrilly upbraiding him threatening to let him starve on his ledge unless he flew away but for the life of him he could not move that was 24 hours ago since then nobody had come near him the day before all day long he had watched his parents flying about with his brothers and sister perfecting them in the art of flight teaching them how to skim the waves and how to dive for fish he had in fact seen his older brother catch his first herring and devour it standing on a rock while his parents circled around raising a proud cackle and all the morning the whole family had walked about on the big plateau midway down the opposite cliff taunting him with his cowardice the sun was now ascending the sky blazing on his ledge that faced the south he felt the heat because he had not eaten since the previous nightfall he stepped slowly out to the brink of the ledge and standing on one leg with the other leg hidden under his wing he closed one eye then the other and pretended to be falling asleep page number 34 still they took no notice of him he saw his two brothers and his sister lying on the plateau dozing with their heads sunk into their necks his father was preening the feathers on his white back only his mother was looking at him she was standing on a little high hump on the plateau her white breast thrust forward now and again she tore at a piece of fish that lay at her feet and then scraped each side of her beak on the rock the sight of the food maddened him how he loved to tear food that way scraping his beak now and again to wet it ga 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 he cried begging her to bring him some food gokola she screamed back derisively but he kept calling plaintively and after a minute or so he uttered a joyful scream 
His mother had picked up a piece of the fish and was flying across to him with it. Page number 35 He leaned out eagerly, tapping the rock with his feet, trying to get nearer to her as she flew across. But when she was just opposite to him, she halted, her wings motionless. The piece of fish in her beak, almost within reach of his beak. He waited a moment in surprise, wondering why she did not come nearer. And then, maddened by hunger, he dived at the fish. With a loud scream, he fell outwards and downwards into space. Then a monstrous terror seized him and his heart stood still. He could hear nothing, but it only lasted a minute. The next moment, he felt his wings spread outwards. The wind rushed against his breast feathers, then under his stomach and against his wings. He could feel the tips of his wings cutting through the air. He was not falling headlong now. He was soaring gradually downwards and outwards. He was no longer afraid. He just felt a bit dizzy. Then he flapped his wings once and he soared upward. Ga, 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 His mother swooped past him her wings making a loud noise. He answered her with another scream. Then his father flew over him screaming. He saw his two brothers and his sister flying around him, curveting and banking and soaring and diving. Then he completely forgot that he had not always been able to fly and commended himself to dive and saw and curve shrieking shrilly. He was near the sea now, flying straight over it, facing straight out over the ocean. He saw a vast green sea beneath him, with little ridges moving over it, and he turned his beak sideways and cawed amusedly. His parents and his brothers and sister had landed on this green flooring ahead of him. They were beckoning to him, calling shrilly. He dropped his legs to stand on the green sea. His legs sank into it. He screamed with fright and attempted to rise again, flapping his wings. But he was tired and weak with hunger, and he could not rise. Page number 36 Exhausted by the strange exercise, his feet sank into the green sea, and then his belly touched it, and he sank no farther. He was floating on it, and around him his family was screaming, praising him, and their beaks were offering him scraps of dogfish. He had made his first flight. Now the meanings of certain words. Page number 32. Ledge means a narrow horizontal shelf projecting from a wall or here a cliff. Upbraiding means scolding. To skim means to move lightly just above a surface, here the sea. Herring, a soft finned sea fish. Preening means making an effort to maintain feathers. To wet means to sharpen. Derisively means in a manner showing someone that she or he is stupid. Dizzy means an uncomfortable feeling of spinning around and losing one's balance. Curveting means leaping like a horse. Banking means flying with one wing higher than the other. Page number 36 Thinking about the text Number 1 Why was the young seagull afraid to fly? Do you think all young birds are afraid to make their first flight? Or are some birds more timid than others? 
Do you think a human baby also finds it a challenge to take its first steps? Number 2. The sight of the food maddened him. What does this suggest? What compelled the young seagull to finally fly? Number 3. They were beckoning to him, calling shrilly. Why did the seagull's father and mother threaten him and cajole him to fly? Number 4. Have you ever had a similar experience where your parents encouraged you to do something that you were too scared to try? Discuss this in pairs or groups. Number 5. In the case of a bird flying, it seems a natural act and a foregone conclusion that it should succeed. In the examples you have given an answer to the previous question was your success guaranteed or was it important for you to try regardless of a possibility or failure speaking we have just read about the first flight of a young seagull your teacher will now divide the class into groups each group will work on one of the following topics prepare a presentation with your group members and then present it to the entire class point number 1 progression of models of airplanes point number 2 progression of models of motor cars point number 3 birds and their wing span point number 4 migratory birds tracing their flights now for writing write a short composition on your initial attempts at learning a skill you could describe the challenges of learning to ride a bicycle or learning to swim make it as humorous as possible page number 37 now the second story the black aeroplane the moon was coming up in the east behind me and stars were shining in the clear sky above me there wasn't a cloud in the sky i was happy to be alone high up above the sleeping countryside i was flying my old dakota aeroplane over france back to england i was dreaming of my holiday and looking forward to being with my family i looked at my watch 1:30 in the morning i should call paris control soon i thought as i looked down past the nose of the aeroplane i saw the lights of a big city in front of me i switched on the radio and said paris control dakota ds 088 here can you hear me I am on my way to England. Over. The voice from the radio answered me immediately. DS 088, I can hear you. You ought to turn 12 degrees west now. DS 088, over. I checked the map and the compass. Switched over to my second and last fuel tank and turned the Dakota 12 degrees west. towards England I'll be in time for breakfast I thought a good big english breakfast everything was going well it was an easy flight paris was about 150 kilometers behind me when i saw the clouds storm clouds they were huge they looked like black mountains standing in front of me across the sky I knew I could not fly up and over them and I did not have enough fuel to fly around them to the north or south. I ought to go back to Paris. I thought, but I wanted to get home. I wanted that breakfast. I'll take the risk, I thought, and flew that old Dakota straight into the storm. Inside the clouds everything was suddenly black. It was impossible to see anything outside the aeroplane. 
the old aeroplane jumped and twisted in the air. Page number 38. I couldn't believe my eyes. The compass was turning round and round and round. It was dead. It would not work. The other instruments were suddenly dead too. I tried the radio. Paris Control, Paris Control, can you hear me? There's no answer. The radio was dead too. I had no radio, no compass, and I could not see where I was. I was lost in the storm. Then, in the black clouds quite near me, I saw another aeroplane. It had no lights on its wings, but I could see it flying next to me through the storm. I could see the pilot's face turned towards me. I was very glad to see another person. He lifted one hand and waved. Follow me, he was saying. Follow me. He knows that I am lost. I thought, he is trying to help me. He turned his airplane slowly to the north, in front of my Dakota, so that it would be easier for me to follow him. I was very happy to go behind the strange aeroplane like an obedient child. After half an hour, the strange black aeroplane was still there in front of me in the clouds. Page number 39 Now there was only enough fuel in the old Dakota's last tank to fly for five or ten minutes more. I was starting to feel frightened again, but then he started to go down, and I followed through the storm. Suddenly, I came out of the clouds and saw two long straight lines of lights in front of me. It was a runway, an airport. I was safe. I turned to look for my friend in the black aeroplane, but the sky was empty. There was nothing there. The black aeroplane was gone. I could not see it anywhere. I landed and was not sorry to walk away from the old Dakota near the control tower. I went and asked a woman in the control center where I was and who the other pilot was. I wanted to say thank you. She looked at me very strangely and then laughed. Another aeroplane? Up there? In this storm? <laughs> no other aeroplanes were flying tonight. Yours was the only one I could see on the radar. So who helped me to arrive there safely without a compass or a radio and without any more fuel in my tanks? Who was the pilot on the strange black aeroplane flying in the storm? without lights. Page number 40. Thinking about the text. Number 1. I'll take the risk. What is the risk? Why does the narrator take it? Number 2. Describe the narrator's experience as he flew the aeroplane into the storm. Number 3. Why does the narrator say I landed and was not sorry to walk away from the old Dakota. Number four. What made the woman in the control center look at the narrator strangely? Number five. Who do you think helped the narrator to reach safely? Discuss this among yourselves and give reasons for your answer. Thinking about language. Number one, study the sentences given as follow. A. They looked like black mountains. B. Inside the clouds, everything was suddenly black. C. In the black clouds near me, I saw another aeroplane. D. The strange black aeroplane was there. The word black in sentences A and C refers to the very darkest color, but in B 
and D here it means without light, with no light. Black has a variety of meanings in different contexts. For example, A. I prefer black tea means I prefer tea without milk. B. With increasing pollution, the future of the world is black means With increasing pollution, the future of the world is very depressing, without hope. Now try to guess the meanings of the word black in the sentences given as follows. Check the meanings in the dictionary and find out whether you have guessed right. Number 1. Go and have a bath. Your hands and face are absolutely black. Blank space. Number 2. The taxi driver gave Ratan a black look as he crossed the road when the traffic light was green. Blank space for your answer. Number 3. The bombardment of Hiroshima is one of the blackest crimes against humanity. Blank space. Number 4. Very few people enjoy Harold Pinter's black comedy. Blank space. Number 5. Sometimes shopkeepers store essential goods to create false scarcity and then sell these in black. Blank space. Number 6. Villagers had beaten the criminal black and blue. Blank space. Page number 41. Now the second part. Look at these sentences taken from the lesson you have just read. A. I was flying my old Dakota aeroplane. B. The young seagull had been afraid to fly with them. In the first sentence, the author was controlling an aircraft in the air. Another example is children are flying kites. In the second sentence, the seagull was afraid to move through the air using its wings. Now match the phrases given under column A with their meanings given under column B. Now the phrases number one, fly a flag, number two, fly into rage, number three, fly along, number four, fly high, and number five, fly the coop. Now the meanings under column B, move quickly or suddenly, be successful, display a flag on a long pole, escape from a place, become suddenly very angry. Now the third part, we know that the word fly of birds or insects means to move through air using wings. Take the words which have the same or nearly the same meaning. These words are swoop, flit, paddle, flutter, ascend, float, ride, skim, sink, dart, hover, glide, descend, saw, shoot, spring, stay, fall, sail, flap. Writing. Have you ever been alone or away from home during a thunderstorm? Narrate your experience in a paragraph. In this lesson, what we have done? Provided two stories about flying. One about a bird, another about a human being in a plane. Now what you can do? As they read the story of the seagull, students can be asked to imagine how a baby learns to walk and compare and contrast the two situations. Page number 42. After they read the second story, students should be asked for their ideas about the phantom plane. Was it really there or did the pilot imagine it? If the students feel it was really there, who could have been piloting it? 
ask students to narrate their own stories about flying. It could be about flying in an aeroplane or flying a kite or about watching a bird flying. In short, anything to do with flight. Give students 10 minutes to think quietly about the topic. During this time, they can make notes about what they want to say. Then ask for volunteer speakers. Now the compound words whose parts mean just the opposite or something else. Quicksand works slowly. There is no egg in eggplant nor ham in hamburger. Neither apple nor pine is pineapple. Page number 43. How to tell wild animals. This poem was written by Carolyn Wells. This humorous poem suggests some dangerous ways to identify or tell wild animals. Read it aloud, keeping to a strong and regular rhythm. If ever you should go by chance to jungles in the east, and if there should to you advance a large and tawny beast, if he roars at you as you are dying, you will know it is the Asian lion. Or if sometime when roaming round a noble wild beast greets you with black stripes on a yellow ground, just notice if he eats you, this simple rule may help you learn the Bengal tiger to discern. If strolling forth a beast you view whose hide and spots is peppered, as soon as he has leapt on you, you will know it is the leopard. It will do no good to roar with pain. He will only lip and lip again. Page number 44. If when you are walking round your yard, you meet a creature there who hugs you very, very hard, be sure it is a bear. If you have any doubts, I guess... He will give you just one more caress. Though to distinguish beasts of prey, a novice might nonplus. The crocodile you always may tell from the hyena thus. Hyenas come with merry smiles, but if they weep, they are crocodiles. The true chameleon is small, a lizard sort of thing. He hasn't any ears at all and not a single wing. If there is nothing on the tree, it is the chameleon, you see. Now the glossary for the meanings of certain words. Ground means background. Discern means make out or identify. Hide means animal skin. Peppered here means Covered with spots. Caress means a gentle, loving touch. Novice means someone new to a job. Be nonplus or be nonplussed means it is usually used only in the passive. It means be puzzled or be confused or be surprised. Page number 45. Thinking about the poem. Number one. Does dying really rhyme with lion? Can you say it in such a way that it does? Number two. How does the poet suggest that you identify the lion and the tiger? When can you do so according to him? Number three. Do you think the words leapt and lep in the third stanza are spelt correctly? Why does the poet spell them like this? Number four. Do you know what a bear hug is? It's a friendly and strong hug, such as bears are thought to give as they attack you. Again, hyenas are thought to laugh and crocodiles to weep. 
the crocodile tears you must have heard as they swallow their victims are there similar expressions and popular ideas about wild animals in your own languages number 5 look at the line a novice might non plus how would you write this correctly why is the poet's incorrect line better in the poem number 6 Can you find other examples of poets taking liberties with language either in English or in your own languages Number 7 Much of the humor in the poem arises from the way language is used although the ideas are funny as well If there are particular lines in the poem that you especially like share these with the class Speaking briefly about what it is about the ideas or the language that you like or find funny english is funny because we have noses that run and feet that smell page number 46 poem title the ball poem a boy loses a ball he is very upset a ball doesn't cost much nor is it difficult to buy another ball Why then is the boy so upset? Read the poem to see what the poet thinks has been lost and what the boy has to learn from the experience of losing something. Now the poem. What is the boy now? Who has lost his ball? What what is he to do? I saw it go merrily bouncing down the street and then merrily over there it is in the water no use to say oh there are other balls an ultimate shaking grief fixes the boy as he stands rigid trembling staring down all his young days into the harbor where his ball went i would not intrude on him a dime another ball is worthless now he senses first responsibility in a world of possessions people will take balls balls will be lost always little boy and no one buys a ball back money is external he is learning well behind his desperate eyes the epistemology of loss how to stand up knowing what every man must one day know and most know many days how to stand up the poet is john berryman now the glossary oh there are other balls the words suggest that the loss is not important enough to worry about shaking grief means sadness which greatly affects the boy rigid means stiff page number 47 to intrude on here means to enter a situation where one is not welcome a dime means 10 cents in united states desperate means hopeless epistemology of loss means understanding the nature of loss what it means to lose something epistemology the greek word episteme means knowledge it comes from a word meaning to understand or to know epistemology is the study of the nature of knowledge itself thinking about the poem in pairs attempt the following questions number 1 why does the poet say i would not intrude on him why doesn't he offer him money to buy another ball number 2 staring down all his young days into the harbor where his ball went do you think the boy has had the ball for a long time is it linked to the memories of days when he played with it number 
what does in the world of positions mean number 4 do you think the boy has lost anything earlier pick out the words that suggest the answer number 5 what does the poet say the boy is learning from the loss of the ball try to explain this in your own words number 6 have you ever lost something you liked very much write a paragraph describing how you felt then and saying whether and how you got over your loss